Hello, yoga friends. I'm Megan, and here's Milo, and we've got a practice for you today for your side body. So it's going to include a little bit of somatic movement as well as some traditional hatha yoga. And when I'm saying the side body, I'm talking mainly about your internal and external oblique muscles, which are very important in supporting your torso, but also your intercostal muscles, which are in between the ribs, and we use them for breathing. So they're part of our respiratory muscles. So come into a comfortable seated position because we're actually going to start by working with those muscles of respiration, the intercostal muscles. Sit down wherever you're comfortable. That can include a chair. And if you've got a big dog next to you, all the better. And then take a moment to imagine you've got an inner tube around your whole waist. You might even touch yourself in the space of ribs. And see if you can expand all 360 degrees around your ribs as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, just let it soften. And this isn't instead of breathing to the abdomen or the chest, it's in addition to. So let your breath flow from your belly to your ribs if you'd like, all the way up to your chest. But focus on the movement in the rib cage. And we're starting mostly with the fronts of the ribs. Might even place your hands there. So just breathing will show us when we have restrictions in this area. And the ribs are about safety. They're our safety zone that divides our lower body of humanness and uh, instinct from our upper body of intellect and spirit. And then also maybe even place your hands on your back. Notice if you're getting any movement in the back body, in the back of the rib cage. And if it's helpful, we use the imagery of anatomy, those intercostal muscles are sliding on each other. So what we call the external intercostals, which are more on the outer ribs, they're going to pull your ribs outward. Feel that upward, upward and outward expansion. And then on the breath out, you're going to feel the internal intercostals and they're going to draw your ribs back in or think of squeezing the breath out of your lungs. And just take one more moment. See if one side seems like it's stronger or weaker than the other. One lung, right lung, left lung, is one stronger or weaker. And then you can relax your arms. Just make some little rolling motions for a moment. And move from your ribs if you'd like. Think of isolating that rib movement. And back to the center. So now place your right hand on the ground and place just your left hand on your left rib cage. And imagine if you draw a line down the center of your spine, everything to the left side or your whole left lung all the way to the back of the spine. See if you can breathe into just your left lung. Breathe into your hand like you're trying to push that hand out and let it go. And notice any movement that happens just from breathing into that left lung. Can you feel the way your spine is coming into a little bit of a side bend, a lateral bend? So you might notice that you're leaning a little bit to the right and begin to exaggerate that as you breathe in. Let that left side lengthen and feel the right side compress. Little side bend. Breathe out and take it back. Again, breathe in. Expand the left side. Breathe out take it back. So I'm going to go against all yogic traditions now, and I'm going to have you take this lateral bend on your inhalation. Think of your arm just spiraling out and growing out of your rib cage, out of those rib muscles. And as you breathe in, continue initiating from the breath. Let the breath, the buoyancy of the breath, fill your left side. And then maybe just reach your arm in the last 25% of the top of the inhale and breathe out. Let it all relax. So we'll continue with that left side. Inhale to the left lung. Feel that side bend happening from the breath. And at the last moment, extend the arm to get a little more space. You could press your hip down, your left hip. Breathe out. 
and release. Take a few more on your own, initiating from the left lung. If there's any discomfort or pain in the shoulder, you don't have to fully extend the arm. You could keep the hand here and move from your elbow because we're working in the torso. It's not about the shoulder. That arm might feel good, but it's not necessary. And then take your last one. Reach to the left arm. Hand could also be on the shoulder. And keep breathing into your left side. Think of your left lung like a balloon. Every inhalation floats the left side upward, expands it. You might also note that your right lung is not very avail available to you right now. And picture those intercostal muscles sliding on one another. Spreading your ribs, bringing them back together. The safety in our center. Take that arm back down. Just pause for a moment at your center with the palms up. Close your eyes if you're comfortable and feel the two sides of your body. Let your right side body and left side body have a conversation with each other. What do they feel like? What would they say to each other? And then you can place your right hand on your right side and see if you can locate yourself in your right lung and start to breathe into the right lung. Think of the front, the side, and the back. So half of that inner tube And your right lung is your bigger lung, has an extra lobe. And notice the natural pattern of movement as you breathe into that right lung. There might be more of an upward stretch through the side body, a little side bend. You can even feel your spine now bending to the left side. And exhale, just coming back to your space of grace where the shoulders land over the hips. You don't have to do, you're releasing. Then the option is there again to think of your arms spiraling out of the rib cage because that's actually what happens in our fetal development. As you breathe in, let the lung expand, creating that side bend, and then the arm is just an extension of what's already happening from your breath. Top of the inhale, bottom of the exhale, completely relax, release, come back to your space of grace. Inhale into the right lung. You can feel your ribs go out and up, reach the arm. Let it go, it's a really soothing. If at any time you feel lightheaded or dizzy, uncomfortable breathing like this, just stop and go back to your natural breath. I call this one independent suspension of the lungs. You have the ability to send your awareness and your breath to one lung more than the other. Thus creating more spaciousness in those, in those intercostal muscles creating safety. Take your last one. Find a place to hold. If the arm is causing discomfort, hand can be on the shoulder. It could even be at your side. You still have the access to your right rib cage. You may want to place that left hand on the ground too for a little more support. Just now having that moment in your right lung. Feel the way the right lung changes both its shape and its volume as you're breathing. It's one of our only organs where we change the volume as well as the shape. The 
these little mini movements that are present just from breathing. And take the hand back down, relax. So remember what we did because we're going to call on this independent suspension of the lungs again throughout our practice. But for now, let's take ourselves down onto our backs out of your seated position. I've got some Irish sunshine in here today. Once you're down on the ground, take your feet wide and just let your inner knees fall together. Just take a moment in this position to land, let your feet feel the ground and your back and spine. And then place your hands on the fronts of the ribs again. And the beautiful thing about this position is now you can really feel the movement of your back body as well as the sides. So breathe again just a few times in this 360 degree breath all the way around your rib cage. And then see if you can just breathe to your left lung. Maybe not just, but capitalize on breathing to the left lung. Then draw your knees apart. Make sure your heels are wider than your hips. Feel the big toe side of your left leg. We'll work with the left leg first. And as you breathe in, come on to the big toe side of the left leg. Draw the left thigh bone towards the front right corner of the mat. Notice how your waist will arch and lengthen on the left side. As you breathe out, bring it back. Continue that movement with just the left leg. Inhale, draw the arch of the foot down towards the floor. Kneecap forward to the right. Exhale, come back. So as you're doing this, you'll notice you might be moving from your foot. Just try to initiate from your breath. So breathe into the left lung. And as you do that, take that left leg in and forward. So create more length from the hip and the leg. You might even in move from your hip and study your foot. And then if it's there, you can also add the arm. So as you're inhaling into the left lung, maybe just slide that left hand overhead. So this is the stretchy part. Exhale. Come back to your space of grace wherever your body lands. Inhale into the left lung, lengthen. Foot falls in, knee. Exhale, come back. You may notice too, I sometimes just let my head roll whichever direction it wants to go. Just a sign that the neck is relaxed, the jaw. And you're focusing on that left side. Take your last one in movement and see if you just want to hang out there for a few breaths. And even though you're still, let the inhalation continue to create space on that left side. Maybe even reaching a little bit further with the arm, further inward with the leg. Being fully present in your left side body and all of that freedom to breathe into the left lung. Breathe out and release. Come back to your knees falling together and even just take five breaths and notice the two sides of your body again. Feel yourself from the feet, maybe all the way through the fingers have that imaginary plumb line going up the center of your body through your spine and just feel left to right. Let the left and right have another conversation with each other. Draw the knees apart. Keep your feet wider than the hips because we don't want the one knee crashing into the other and the left leg will stay still. Now we'll work from the right leg. So feel the big toe side of the right leg. But before you move, place your right hand on your right ribs. See if you can feel yourself, again, breathing into just the right side. And you can feel the ground on the backs of the ribs giving you feedback. Your hand. 
And there's no restraining. The breath can also go to the belly and the chest. But focus on really moving those muscles between the ribs. And then on that big toe side, next time you breathe in, tip in. Draw the right thigh bone and knee towards the front left corner of the mat. Notice the way your waist will arch and lift. Exhale, come back. Breathe in, lengthen and arch. Breathe out, come back. Find the rhythm with your breath and see if you can let breath be first. Breathe into your right lung, then start to move the leg. You can move from the foot, the hip, the knee. Imagine that your leg is responding to the spaciousness that's created in your right side from the lung. And at any time, you could add your right arm reaching overhead. Just placing a little more tension on that side. Remember, tension is yummy stretching. We think of tension in different ways as a bad thing, holding tension in our body. But when I use the term tension, it's creating that good strain on the muscles, what we call stretching. Make sure it is good. Just the right amount where it's still pleasant. You can let your head roll. And take your last one and pause there for a few breaths. All your awareness into the right side. You might sense we don't completely close the ribs now. Those internal intercostal muscles can't pull them all the way in because you're in the side stretch. But the external intercostals are having a party, making lots of space. And slowly come back up. Feel free to hug your knees and your chest and just make some circles with your pelvis and your spine. You can roll the backs of the ribs into the floor. So that was the stretchy part. Ready to switch gears? All right, so we're gonna switch into the strengthening part. I'm gonna have you take your just your right hand and place it in the back of the neck. And I'll show you briefly, when we come up with the head, we're not going to change the shape of the neck, meaning bring the chin towards the chest. Practice just once, just lifting your head straight up so your gaze is staying wherever it's starting when your head's on the floor. So keep that gaze and use the strength of your arm. What that'll do is encourage you to use more of these side body core muscles. Then we're gonna lift up just the left leg. You can let your left arm be to your side because we're gonna use the power of the leg. And um, as you exhale, you're going to draw the left leg in and just lift ever so slightly. Notice how your low back and low ribs presses into the ground. As you inhale, take the left foot down, press your right elbow into the ground and arch your back. So the pelvis will tilt forward into an anterior tilt. As I exhale, I'm gonna posterior tilt the pelvis, lift up. You can hug your elbow if you want. Inhale, come down. So this is a play on the arch and curl on somatics. We arch on the inhale and we curl on the exhale. So this will help us to find the transversus abdominis, those deeper core muscles, as well as we're now going into the obliques. But feel your side bodies. And I'm coming up straight for now, keeping my knee and elbow in line, left and right. But you can also play with doing this as more of a cross movement. Just watch you're not cranking your neck over to where it's uncomfortable. Think of moving from your collarbone. And just checking your inhaling and arching, stretching the front body, and it's the exhale that'll allow you to engage or contract those side body muscles coming up. This one might build a little bit of heat. Check 
Check to see you're releasing when you come down on the inhale. Pressing right elbow into the ground. You can even press, press your left shoulder blade into the ground. And then take that last one. See if you can find that washboard stomach in the front. Hold it, but release your head down. Let your arm relax. You got to bring your breath all the way up into your chest. See if you can lock down. So we call this bracing. You're going to brace the muscles around the ribs, the lower abdomen, breathe to the chest. We'll do this one more time. See if you can feel that bracing sensation. For me, it helps to keep the left leg active. So draw the left thigh and even the ankle into flexion. And when you're ready at an inhalation, take a big breath in, fill both lungs. Let them float up and release it all. So we'll do the bracing one more time. Right hand behind the head. Inhale into your arch. Press the right shoulder down and arm. Exhale, curl up. So see what you can find there as far as muscles tightening, contracting, or strengthening. Keep that. Slowly let the head come down so the head and neck are relaxed. All loosey-goosey, but you can feel the power of the side body muscles. Hug that left leg in. If you work with pelvic floor, pelvic floor can be engaged here too. So it's a much nicer way, this bracing, to to engage the muscles because our back and spine is relaxed, our head's relaxed, and we can let go of any of the other muscles that don't need to support our torso. And I can still talk and feel them. Touch, feel. Feel your washboard. (laughs) And then take a big breath in. And let it go. We're going to go right to the opposite side in the strengthening. So take your left hand to the base of the head. Pause there for a moment. Recognize your right leg. I like to just pick it up to feel it. And then as you exhale, you're going to keep, remember, keep your nose and your gaze up. Maybe just lift a tiny bit. See what turns on as you exhale. Where do you feel the muscles in your side body, in your front body? Inhale, place the foot down, press your left elbow and arm and shoulder into the ground, arch your back, tilt the pelvis forward. Exhale, curl the tailbone up, draw in. You can lift your elbow or not. I find sometimes when I lift my elbow, I cheat more with my head, so I tend to keep my elbow out here. Inhale and arch. Let that front body and side body be free. Exhale, call on them. Turn them on. Take your time. If you equalize your breath in, your breath out, the movement will be smooth. So you can stay in line, the left side and right side, elbow and knee, or you can start to cross a little bit. Feel those muscles in rotation. And as important as it is on the exhale to feel them turning on, there's this voluntary release into gravity on the way out on the inhale. So let them go slowly, but then completely. Breathing in and out. And we'll get ready to do our brace on this side. Make it a good one. Press into your arch on the inhale. Curl up on the exhale. See if you can feel that washboard feeling. You can even touch it with your right hand. Let the head come down. Head, neck, jaw relaxed, even the shoulder. It's just that internal sensation of hugging in, in and around your side body, fronts of the ribs. But there's ease to the breath. Noticing how these supportive torso muscles can turn on while your backside's relaxed, shoulders, neck, relaxed. And then take a breath in, fill the lungs, let the foot come down. Let it all stretch out, find that spaciousness, breathe out and fall onto the floor. We'll do one more with the bracing. Hand behind the head. Press the arm into the ground, arch, 
As you exhale, right leg comes up, left arm. So take it to wherever you can just feel through your chest, your side ribs, the lower abdomen. And see if you can let the head relax. The bracing is in and around your corset of muscles. Think if you were wearing a corset right now. Thank goodness we're not. Sensing the support. Everything else can relax. I notice I was tightening my shoulders. So check it, check in with yourself. Is there anything you're tightening you don't need to? You can even touch them. Sometimes we feel from the inside. Sometimes we need to use our hands and fingers as feelers for the outside. You might even feel where your skin is, is sort of crunching together, smushing. And then take an inhale and release it. Okay, we're going to go back to the idea of soothing or stretching, and I'm gonna have you roll on to your left side. Now I get a better view of Milo anyhow. If you'd like to put something underneath your head, by all means, please do, and make sure it goes behind you. I generally like to let my head fall to the floor, and take your left hand slightly in front of you, and then you're gonna take your right hand to the base of the head like we did before. See if you can land and locate yourself in your right ribs. So if you want to take the hand off for a moment. So you might even notice how you're feeling that same, what was a side bend when we were seated, now it's right rib cage lifting up towards your ceiling. Left ribs lift up. You can feel it now from the floor. Exhale. Let them come in for a landing. We're going to do two movements here. The first one is a rotational movement. So breathe into that right lung, and as you breathe in, begin to roll your right shoulder and arm behind you. And you can stack your knees however it suits you. You're going to get a stretch probably through your pelvis too. As you breathe out, roll all the way back. If for any reason the head, hand behind the head doesn't feel good, you can also just do this with your hand at your side. In fact, sometimes that is a better way to know that you're initiating the movement from your torso, not from your arm, or even better from your breath. Breathe into your right lung. Just imagine the right lung ballooning up and floating you back to the right into this rotation. Adjust your legs however you need to. Exhale, roll back, drop the right side body towards the floor in front of you, inhale, Roll the right side body back. Exhale the other way. Take one or two more here. And at any time, just landing and being still. Hand can be here or on your side. Another opportunity to continue to breathe through your right side. Feeling the spaciousness. As you exhale, slowly roll back. So hopefully that was all ooey gooey for you as we move on to the next one. Hey, Milo. <clears throat> We're going to do more with the activation. So you might want to lengthen your legs just a little bit. You can still keep a bend in the knee so you don't feel too tippy. But we're going to feel that right side. And now imagine on the inhalation, you can feel that floating up, and you might even float your right hand overhead so there's more length. You might even reach your right leg long. So there's your lengthening. But we're going to work on that action of engagement on the right side. So as you exhale, without lifting the head the first time, just imagine drawing your armpit and your hip towards each other or squeeze the breath out of the right lung. And then inhale. Float the right ribs up. Fill it up. Lengthen it, breathe out, squeeze it in. So you can see I'm not lifting my head. The option is there to lift the head and it'll give you more squeeze. But if you're lifting the head, take the base of the skull back. So you should be looking straight ahead. You shouldn't be able to see your front body. So we wanna keep the neck in alignment with the, with the sacrum. And you can inhale and reach. You might even reach your foot. 
And I like to exhale, bring that head up, gaze forward, squeeze the hip in the armpit, reach my hand and plug my hip in. So there's a shortening through the right waist and then inhale, lengthening through the right waist. So this will include the muscles in the right side of the neck. When the right waist shortens, the muscles on the right side of the neck shorten. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, strengthen. Little combination here. Initiate from your breath. Right lung breathing. Independent suspension. I have to watch myself on that cheat, not bringing my head forward, but looking straight ahead. So you're using more of the muscles in the side of the neck. This one too, if you feel like you need more lengthening, you can do your hold when your arms overhead and your legs reaching, breathing into your right lung. And then you'd focus on the inhale, or you might take a few right here, squeezing in. And let it go. Take a moment to relax on that side while I pet Milo. And then we're gonna go back into some strengthening. So we're gonna come up to the left arm and you wanna place your left shoulder right over the elbow and then take your knees, stack them together and draw your knees back so that you have a straight line through your thighs and your belly. You can kick your feet back. Take your right hand to your right ribs Breathe into the right lung and create that side bend. Breathe out and just let it fall. So do that for the first few times. And you might continue to do this just for the stretch. But let's say we want to make this a little more strengthening. Then as you breathe in, push into your arm. Lift the left hip off the ground. Breathe out slowly come down. So as you're stretching and expanding the right lung, the left lung is, the left lung is emptying, but you're also using the side body muscles on the left side. So it's lift up on the inhalation, drop down on the exhale. And there's a few rules that I use in somatic yoga to help me to recruit muscles. One's is push into. So push into the left arm and the left in the left knee and then pull away from pull away from the ground with the left side body and then come back down as you exhale so what can you push into what can you pull away from in gravity to help you you want to take that last one and hold for a few breaths notice how strong that left side body is maybe you want to extend your right arm you got this. And you'll definitely have it in a couple days when you feel it again. <laughs> and come down. We're ready for some soothing, right? So I'm gonna switch on to my right side. Please join me. <sighs> curl up a little bit. Let's curl up in our fetal curl. Take a little extra resting time can rock yourself. Fetal curl is all about safety. We test ourselves a little bit and then we find that safe, sacred space. And switching your awareness into your left side. Stack your knees wherever it's most comfortable. Take your left hand forward and first just breathe into your left lung again. Notice the natural rhythm, the lifting that happens and the dropping as you breathe out. Remember always the option to go back to your natural breath. Just stimulating that left lung the knowledge of the feel of it floating up. 
And now you have feedback from the floor, feeling the right side body lifting too. And once we have that, we're going to go into the rotation. So you could just keep your arm here, or you can place your hand, left hand behind the head. And as you breathe in, feel the left lung make space and roll backwards. Bring your left shoulder blade towards the ground. Breathe out and roll forward. So think of rotating your left side body. Build the lung, create space. Empty the lung like you're squeezing the breath back out. So if the hand doesn't work behind the head, you can also just keep the hand on your rib cage because that's not a movement for the arm. It's about moving from your side, from your torso. Like any changes to the leg position that make your hips happy. If you're really enjoying the movement, keep on. Otherwise, stop and find a hold. Hand might rest at your ribs or behind the head. Access that space of left side body with your breath and with your thoughts. Left side, we can think of our spleen and our beautiful heart. Create space around the heart. As you breathe out, slowly roll out. Time to go between that stretch and the strengthen. So you're going to want to lengthen your legs out a little bit. Milo, if I can share with you, please. <clears throat> Start again by just breathing into the left lung. As you feel that lift, you can exaggerate it, kind of push your ribs up towards the sky. You could also reach your left arm overhead. You might reach through your left leg. So take the armpit and the hip away from one another. And then as you breathe out, squeeze armpit and hip. Imagine squeezing the breath out like an accordion out of that left lung. Draw the hip towards the arm, arm towards the hip. And you take a few with just the head on the ground so you're sensing it's a side body movement. So this is a really good one for those internal intercostals and internal obliques because you're focusing on squeezing on the exhalation. If you want to add the head, make sure your gaze is straight ahead. You shouldn't be able to see your body. So skull in line with the sacrum. Inhale and lengthen. Exhale, feel the muscles in the left side of the neck. Here you have a chance to hold at either end in the stretchy portion here or the strong portion here. Keep using your breath to either contract if you're on the engaged portion or to stretch on the if you're on the stretchy part. Nice little move for your hip abductors too. Can you feel that? I do. <laughs> and let it come back down and relax. <sighs> no Milo to pet on this side, so we're going straight up to our right forearm. So coming on to the right forearm, take your net legs and stack them. Push your legs back so that your knees are in line with your navel center. So you've got one long straight line. Practice first just breathing into the left lung. And notice how much that will help to initiate movement. You'll create that side body curve. 
Your right side will lift and it'll be the right side will be activating the muscles this time. And sometimes this is enough. But if you want more, think of pushing into gravity with the right arm and the right outer leg and knee. Lift up. Breathe out. Come down. So I think one of the most underutilized important poses in yoga is what we call side plank. This is a nice version of side plank. And the thing I like about this one is that when we do full side plank, you're really putting a lot of leg muscle into it. This focuses on the side body, taking the legs out of it for the most part. Inhaling and lifting. And exhaling. Sometimes I talk just to distract you, keep you going. And if you want to find a hold, you can hold here. Arm could come overhead. Hand over, over your ear or straight. So here I've got lots of work going on in that bottom right side, but I also feel my left side kicking on. They're teaming up. But the left side is long and active. Right side is short and active. What a team. <laughs> come down and relax. Before we go to a standing position, we're just going to do a little bit of a stretch. Take your legs out in front of you, place your feet on the ground, and just make some circles. So we're going to take the legs out of it. Make some circles from your rib cage. Let your pelvis and shoulders respond. So both of the girdles. If you want to place your hands there and think, where is that? I call it the juicy center. Where is your juicy center? Just move very intuitively from your juicy center. So there's that undulation of the back and forth, but there's also the side movement. There might be a little rotational movement. All the things those side bodies provide us with our spine. Now we're going to finish this practice with just a few standing poses. So from our standing position, we're going to explore a warrior two footprint, but I'm going to have you come to the long edge of your mat, widen your feet, and just take a few bends in and out of the knees, wake up your legs a little bit, because we've been working in the side body. Uh, and then draw up, draw up and rotate your thigh bones in. Keep your right leg where it is so you should feel engaged through that right leg and turn your left foot just a quarter of a turn. So here's our warrior two footprint. And then start to bend in and out of that front left leg. Again, just waking it up. Keep that right leg strong. Ooey gooey gooey stuff. And then we stack the shoulders over the hips facing the long edge of the mat. Take your arms out, reach through the fingers, but plug your arm bones into your shoulder blades and find your warrior two. So there's a few changes we do in the warrior two, some postures we do, and one is the extended warrior. So if I wanna go into extended warrior, what normally happens is I would take my left hand, my front arm and reach up. But what I'd like you to do is place your left hand on your shoulder. Start breathing into your left lung because now we know how to do that. And notice as you do that, how you'll naturally come into that lateral bend again. So you can breathe into left lung and laterally bend. Breathe out. Just let your torso flow back to wherever it goes naturally. If you want to place your hand, your left hand on your left lung, you can do that too. Probably feels better than the shoulder. And it's a technique, right, to feel. So next time, breathe into the left lung, find that side body. I know your legs are working right now. And then you might want to let the left hand grow out of it like we did earlier to create more of an extension. But continue to breathe into your left lung. Take five good, long, easeful breaths here. Continue to explore the space and slight contraction in the left side, just from breathing into that lung. And your legs are strong and steady. Come out slowly. 
straighten your front leg. So we're gonna go into Trikonasana now, our triangle pose. So now I'll place your right hand on your right lung and begin to breathe into your right lung. Legs are steady and strong. And this is like the I'm a little teacup. As you breathe into your right lung, you're gonna tip over towards the left. So you can exaggerate that a little bit. But let the breath into your right lung take you over to the left. That's the force, which really isn't force. It's very subtle and pleasurable. And then see how far you can go with your torso. Continue to inhale into the right side. And you can keep your right hand at your waist, or maybe it comes up, but you'll notice there's no need for me to go down to the floor because as soon as I do that, I lose that ability to lengthen through the torso. So I like to take my left hand, press it into the calf, push my calf into my hand, and that's going to give me more ability to open up, to lengthen. Keep breathing into your right side. Because this pose is a container for your breath, and the availability is in your right lung. The left lung is pretty smushed. You could also do extended, reaching your right arm overhead. Roll your right shoulder back. Inhale, come back up. Turn all 10 toes forward, heels in and toes out. And just wash it all away. <laughs> Move it around a little bit. Be playful, have fun. And see if you can move from your waist again. Move your rib cage as your legs move. Nice little wave-like motion. And we'll come back up. Turn your toes forward, feet wide enough so that when you engage and turn your right leg, you're where you want to be in your warrior. But draw your thigh bones in, press into the pinky toe side of left foot. So that's fully on supporting you. Now turn your right foot, quarter of a turn, and then begin to bend in and out of the right leg. So I always have to build from the foundation, even when we're working with the sides. Once we're standing, it becomes about the feet first, finding the leg muscles. That's got to stabilize you. And finding the warrior two, you can add your arms, right arm forward, left arm back, plug them in. Stacking your shoulders over your hips, turning towards the long edge of the mat. And we're going to go back first. So you could either place your right hand, drop your left hand, place your right hand on your right shoulder or on the rib cage. Start to breathe into your right lung. And notice with each of these poses, is it becoming more available to you to breathe to just one lung? Can you let the buoyancy of the lung do the work? Take you into that side bend towards the back. So it's like you're letting your respiration knock on the door for you. And then maybe you want to let everybody in and extend your hand to your arm. Continue to breathe into your right lung. So fully stretching. So a lot of times the torso's here and the arms here. We're approaching it from the torso. And then the arm is just an answer to that torso already lengthening through the right side. Two more breaths. Yes, legs stay strong. <laughs> and then release. We'll switch into Chakranasana, so straighten that front right leg, hug your inner thighs, take your left hand to your left ribs, do your best little, I'm a little teapot, 
And as you breathe into the left lung, feel that tipping over. Coming into Trikonasana. So maybe instead of coming all the way back, you start to let each breath in, extend you a little further. Instead of bouncing all the way back, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, try to hold. Inhale, left lung. Exhale, hold. So the other thing I find when I do it this way, as opposed to taking the arm down, bending the knee, is that I notice which side is tighter through my side body. So this is my tighter side. So if my hand was way down here last time, it might need to be a little bit higher. You can push the back of your hand into your calf and your calf into your hand. That helps to stabilize the leg. It also allows you to open up if you want to take your arm overhead. But it's the breath first. If taking your arm causes you to stop breathing, just keep it at your waist. You've made the left lung accessible, so take advantage of that. And here we have long and strong. Last breath. Lift up. Take your wings down. Turn your toes forward. You can heel toe your feet together. And we're going to come back down. Take your time coming down. Oh. We'll use a little bit of core here. That's nice too because of those front body muscles. Press your feet into the ground. Reach your fingers forward, thumbs up. And feel yourself like you're going to lay down onto your spine one vertebrae at a time. When you feel your feet are flying up in the air, push them down even harder. Fight that floor, push into gravity. Go really slow. Through each vertebrae. Feel those front and side body muscles. They're saying, we're here, we're here. <laughs> we're here, <laughs> landing. I'm going to... Um, encourage you in Shavasana to take just a really gentle side bend. And when we do this, I have my block here. So if I got my block, you can always use a pillow or blanket. <clears throat> I'll show you from the right side first. You're just going to walk your legs over to the left. And you can just let your left leg hang. Or I like to come into a tree pose. So that's why I have my block here. I bend my left knee. Place the block underneath my left knee. And then reach your right arm overhead. Or maybe you just... Take your right shoulder more to the left. So we're creating that side bending posture, breathing into the right first. We'll be here for about a minute or so. All your awareness into your right side, all your breath into your right lung. Whatever action, stability it provided you with. Focus now on the exhalation allowing the back of the right ribs to release into the ground. Feel the heaviness of the right side of the body with every breath out. And still sense the freedom and spaciousness on the breath in. And in your mind's eye, visualize your whole right side from the toes to the fingers, fingers to the toes. And physically, our respiration represents our prana. And it's limited to just the lung. But energetically in the subtle body, you can breathe prana through that whole right side, starting from the juicy center your ribs. And let it just spread like water down a mountain into your leg, to your toes, into your shoulder, to your fingers. And 
Allow your right side body to be integrated fully and completely with the shoulders, the hips, the arm and the leg. Feel the safety and support underneath your right side. Take three more breaths into that space. Might even breathe in your nose. Let it go out your mouth. Come up very slowly because we're going to do the other side, but think of this as one long pose with just a little shift in between. Extending your left leg, your right leg gets to be in whatever position it wants now. But walk your left leg to the right side of the mat. Try to keep that hip down on the ground. You can walk your left shoulder to the right side of the mat. You might also add the arm hanging over or reaching over. I like to bend into my right knee like a tree pose. Put the block underneath it if it's not touching the ground. Sensing right lung, excuse me, left lung left side body. I'm just feeling this pose as a container for you to absorb whatever shows itself in your left side. And when we absorb the information, we can absorb and keep it or absorb and purge it. You're purging, let it go on your exhalation. And let that exhalation bring your left rib cage closer and closer to the ground. Feel the ease of the support of the ground underneath you. From your juicy center, the whole left side connects, toes to fingers, fingers to toes. The physical breath may only reach the lung, but the energetic breath can touch anything, any part, muscle, bone, joint, the organs, whatever you see in your mind's eye on your left side. Take your last three breaths, and if you'd like, you can breathe in your nose, out your mouth, letting go. And just delicately and kindly slide yourself out. You may find that you want to hug your knees in, roll around on the backs of the ribs again, just rocking side to side. And we'll take our final landing with both legs extended and find your center. Shake your legs out. And just for five rounds, visualize that inner tube once again around your torso. Breathe into your juicy center. Feel the movement of the ribs, side bodies. 
receiving and releasing. From this place of center, connect all that's below, the abdomen, the pelvis, the legs, with all that's above, the chest, the shoulders, the arms and the head. Allow yourself to be divine in a human form. Notice if you've gone into a more natural, spontaneous breath. Just place your hands anywhere on your body where you feel your breath landing. Notice if there's movement in the sides of the body, the ribs. I invite you to stay here for as long as you'd like. Just breathing and being, no longer doing. Or if you want to join me, coming up, take your time, roll to one side. Might be a nice time to try a seated meditation too. You could start with your more focused breath in your ribs. Then just let your breath be. Let it be in your body however it wants to move. Thanks so much for joining me today for this practice. Please leave me comments. They motivate me. They guide me, but I do appreciate you being with me. Peace, joy, love, and light.